speaking with Dr. Chris Burns this morning from Amplia Therapeutics. Chris, good morning. Good morning, Andrew. Pleasure to speak with you. Yeah, good to see you, Chris. Uh, firstly, for our audience here, give us a, a brief introduction to Amplia. Amplia Therapeutics is a drug development company based here in Melbourne. Uh, we're developing uh, small molecule inhibitors of a protein that's overexpressed in cancer. It's a protein called FAK. The drug was discovered in Australia. It was discovered by the Cancer Therapeutics Cooperative Research Centre. So we're developing Australian technology in Australia and taking that overseas. And your your accent trial, you've recently hit a milestone with the phase 2A portion. Uh, tell us a bit more here. Yeah, the accent trial is a trial that we're running with our FAC inhibitor. It's a best in class inhibitor of, of this protein. Uh, the trial is in pancreatic cancer, advanced patients who are being newly diagnosed. And we're adding our drug in addition to the standard of care therapy here in Australia, which is two therapies called gemcitabine and abraxane. So the Accent trial has been running now for um, about a year and a half. We initially started trying to find a safe and well-tolerated dose of our drug, namafotinib, in conjunction with gemcitabine and abraxane. That was the 1B portion. We finished that in November last year. We identified a safe dose of namafotinib, which is a 400 milligram dose taken daily, orally as a pill. Um, and we're now running uh, what is called the 2A portion. So we're taking that identified dose from the 1B portion. We're looking at it in, in pancreatic cancer patients. And now we're obviously still monitoring safety and tolerability, but we're now also monitoring efficacy. And part of that trial is that we need to get to 26 patients. And at 26 patients, we stop and we pause enrollment and we look to see if we can find six or more patients who've responded to that treatment. Um, to date, we've enrolled the 26 patients. So we're really pleased to do that. We did that in six months, which is fantastic. Um, and we're now monitoring those patients and we hope to be able to speak to the number of partial responses, probably at the end of this quarter, the beginning of Q4. And what are you seeing so far as far as efficacy signals? So the, the 1B portion, uh, which completed in November last year, uh, enrolled 14 patients. And as I said, that's predominantly a safety tolerability st study, but we did look at uh, uh, efficacy readouts what we saw from just 14 patients, we actually saw six partial responses and we saw the remaining eight patients on the trial had stable disease. Now, that's on the backdrop of advanced pancreatic cancer, which uh, is a very aggressive cancer. Um, so to get all 14 patients have some level of response from the trial is really exceptional and twice as good as what we anticipated from historical data. So we, we were very, very pleased with that data. And that's given us the confidence to move aggressively forward with the 2A trial. And you're looking to take the trial into the US <clears throat> next year, are you? Yeah, not this particular trial. So as I said, we're combining namafotinib with gemcitabine and abraxane. That gemcitabine and abraxane is standard of care in Australia. In the US, the standard of care is a different chemotherapy called Folferinox. So we uh, have preclinical data showing that our drug enhances the effect of Folferinox. And so what we want to do in the US trial is actually combine Namafotinib with Folferinox in the same way that we're combining here in Australia Namafotinib with Gemcitabine and Abraxane. To do that, to run a trial in the US, you need what's called an investigational new drug application, an IND. Uh, we filed that IND at the end of last year and we're very pleased that it was uh, cleared by the FDA and we announced that in January this year. So we have all the regulatory uh, um, paperwork in place and we can we can start that trial um, and we're in the process of planning that out now. And to assist with the planning for that trial, uh, tell me a bit more about your clinical advisory board. Yes, yeah, so we convened a clinical advisory board of experts in pancreatic cancer. So we've got two very well-respected pancreatic cancer clinician scientists um, from the US, uh, and we've got uh, two in Australia, uh, two of the scientists and uh, clinicians we work with already. 
And then that's overseed by Jose Iglesias, who is our uh, uh, chief medical officer. Um, so we have a, a, a really good group of, of experts advising us on protocols, on, on, on you know, the, the way the pancreatic cancer market is evolving and developing and, and how our drug can benefit patients. Well, look, just Chris, tell me a bit more about pancreatic cancer itself. I was surprised to see it's still classified as an orphan disease. Yeah, so it's still an orphan disease. Uh, orphan disease in the US uh, context means that we have uh, less than 200,000 patients diagnosed with that indication per year. Uh, so it's less than 100,000 patients are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. But unfortunately, pancreatic cancer is one of those cancers that people often don't uh, realize they have it until quite late in the disease, at which time the, the cancer can have metastasized, spread to other parts of the body. So the, the five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer is a dismal 13%. Um, that's And that's even only a new number. You know, Previously, it's been around 10, 11%. So it's slowly uh, creeping up to 13%. So you do see, while it's a small, a smaller patient numbers in terms of diagnosis, many of those patients unfortunately will pass away with the disease within five years, and many of them within two years. So we applied from the U uh, with the US FDA for orphan drug designation, which gets us some special privileges with the US FDA, and and we we achieved that that uh, orphan drug designation. And Chris, you're also looking at opportunities within the ovarian cancer space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so ovarian cancer, like pancreatic cancer, is often diagnosed quite late. Um, it also has a, another feature that's similar to pancreatic cancer in that it's very fibrotic, uh, which means there's a sort of scar tissue that's associated with the cancer. And as a consequence, there's a high uh, expression and high activity of the protein FAK that our drug actually blocks. So there's some similarities between these two diseases. And, and we've shown in preclinical studies that our drug is very active in ovarian cancer as it is active in, in pancreatic cancer. So it's, it's a clear uh, parallel path that we can adopt um, to look at developing the drug in ovarian cancer. And, and we've had a lot of interest from ovarian uh, cancer specialists in both Australia and the US, and we're working with them now to, to map out a, a development plan. And you've recently raised some cash via an entitlement offer. Just tell us a bit more, Chris, how you're looking from a financial perspective. Yeah, so we were very pleased to uh, to complete an entitlement offer. We, we brought in $4.3 million from existing investors, but we're, we're very pleased to have that level of support from existing investors, but we also got some additional, uh, some new investors on board. Um, and, and that money, uh, you know, obviously supports our activities at the moment, particularly the accent trial. And so, and so we've got money in the bank to, to carry things forward. So finally, Chris, just to summarise, what are those big milestones you're working towards for the rest of the year? Yeah, so the, the main one is reporting on our interim data from the ACCENT trial. As I said, we expect that to be the end of Q3, beginning of Q4. Um, that will be, I think, a real catalyst for us to get out there and talk talk about, you know, the program, the 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 uh, excellent data we've seen to date. Uh, we will be speaking and, and uh, um, reporting to the market on some progress with regulatory filings. Um, and, and some additional preclinical work we're, we're still actually conducting with our molecule to expand the clinical opportunities. So so a, a number of things that will be coming out over the next few months. Are you having any early partnering discussions? Yeah, business development activity is picking up, um, I'm, I'm really pleased to say. Um, we have a, one other competitor uh, in, in the Western world, there's there's two companies developing FAC inhibitors. One's in China, one's in the US. That US company is called Veristem. They've reported some very um, good data with a small subset of ovarian cancer um, patients called low-grade serious ovarian cancer. Um, and on the back of that, that's essential clinical validation of what we're doing, that you can add a FAC inhibitor on top of existing therapies and enhance the activity of those existing therapies. So that sort of validates exactly what we're doing, what we've seen in our own studies. And so uh, 
partners are now sitting up and taking notice of of uh, our molecules. And as I said before, ours is the best in class FAC inhibitor. So we're excited about that opportunity. Great to see you, Chris. Thanks for your time. Thanks very much, Andrew. All the best.